Cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. First, I wanna thank everybody who commented on the 10K subscriber giveaway. We're gonna do that at the end of this video. The timestamp is here. But today we're gonna to go ahead and talk about man packs. This is gonna be the first in a four or five part series. Uh, but I do wanna say before we start there, thank you so much for everybody who commented. I have a renewed faith, faith, faith in the internet uh, based on those comments, you guys gave me a lot of great uh, feedback. And in general, all of the comments were very positive. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the man pack stuff. All right, so let's start with the basics and a simple definition of what a man pack is. Basically, it is just a device or object that can be carried by a single person, uh, typically on their back. And this was popularized uh, by the military, uh, most of the photos I have seen of radio man packs were around World War II. I don't know if it goes back any farther than that. At that time, radios were fairly large, but the point is it was a single radio system, complete radio system with power antenna that a single man or woman, I guess, could carry out into the field to establish communications. And I guess you're wondering, why would you need to do that when there are HTs or handhelds? Well. In our VX6R series, I talked about all the benefits of that little handheld radio, uh, but it does have limitations, mostly because of its size. It's limited by power, it's limited on the bands it can operate on, and in general, um, your overall effectiveness is limited to a small area. Enter the man pack uh, with a larger radio, within reason. Uh, you allow for larger battery packs, a little bit more power, different modes of operation. So that is the context by which we are presenting man packs. And I'm going to give you my viewpoint on how to create a civilian style man pack based on my experience. All right. So now that we know what a man pack is, let's talk about why you might want one. We've talked a little bit about our HTs and these are typically restricted to VHF, UHF, and typically the only mode of operation for transmit is FM, which is somewhat limiting. When you move into some of the uh, larger radios that you find in your vehicle for your mobiles or your base stations in your shack, you get to work with other modes that have different applications. AM, FM, single sideband, CW, digital. So by transitioning away from this radio, depending on what base unit we want to use as the platform for our man pack, we now open ourselves up to multiple different modes that have different applications. Now, in terms of uh, bands, we also again, depending on which base we go with, can also move into HF. And the nice thing about high frequency radio is that it gives us the ability, depending on how we deploy our antenna and how much power we run, to get beyond line of sight radio with the VHF, UHF handhelds. We can literally uh, do local, basically everybody in the city, everybody in my county, everyone in the state, nationwide, and even globally. So it really opens up things. I'm gonna show you a couple of radios where that man pack literally can take you to making a contact at home all the way across the globe and everywhere in between. So stay tuned for that. All right, so one of the other limitations of the HTs is power. Depending on which radio we use as the basis or platform for our man pack, we now have the ability to step up the power. Uh, in general, the principles of operating a man pack, since they are self-contained, um, lend itself to the principle of what's the least amount of power you need to fulfill your contact. So in general, I would say man packs should be operated at 5 watts, 10 watts, or 20 watts, being kind of the sweet spot in terms of uh, ability to get out there and be heard, but also uh, the nice mix of having smaller batteries without going crazy. I do have some man packs that will do 50 watts and even 100, and then you start to get into larger radios, heavier radios, uh, bigger footprints to carry in your pack, and much larger batteries. And then layer on the ability to field recharge those, you can kind of see where I'm going from here. So basically the transitioning away from five watt to something that gives you more power but doesn't go crazy is another benefit of why you might want to consider a man pack. All right, so what does a man pack look like? Well, in terms of the military radios, uh, go online, take a look at man pack radios. You'll see things like the PRC 152s, for example. 
and uh, they're almost unobtainable by civilians. And if you do get your hands on one, you're going to spend a lot of money and chances are they will be fully neutered in that they don't support encryption. So what I found to work best for me in terms of uh, field expedient man packs is to build it on top of amateur radio equipment. So I just want to show you a quick preview of what one of my man packs looks like. I have about five different ones that do various things. In the series, we're going to take a look at each of them based on their features, capabilities, and applications. So the important thing to keep in mind before we really dive into it is that this is a single self-contained unit. It has the radio. It has the antennas relocated. It has everything it needs included in the pack itself uh, to the antennas, power, hand mic, and in some of the builds I do, even digital, so we can do a whole bunch of really cool things beyond voice. This man pack, I believe, runs about eight pounds, so I have about four or five different man packs that range anywhere from seven pounds all in to about 10 pounds all in, and that three pounds is significant. So let's talk about my view of civilian man packs, what I've done over the last 18 months, and I'm gonna break down all of these components for you. Okay, so the most important part of your man pack build really should be what type of radio is gonna have the features that you're looking for. Uh, power, bands you wanna operate, we'll get into that in later videos. But one of the core requirements in my mind is what does the form factor or footprint and size and weight look like? For most of my man pack builds, I want something that's about the size of my hand. I have medium to large hands, and I find that starting with a mobile rig that you would typically deploy in your vehicle is actually a good size. These are typically installed under your seat, in the trunk, and the head units are typically relocated to the dash. Uh, for the man packs, everything is self-contained here. So this is not terribly field expedient on its own. Uh, this one is actually the FTM 6000. Uh, I've got two of these man packs. Uh, you'll notice that there's a power dongle and uh, SO239 coaxial cable on the back side and also a data port so we can do digital with this unit. So how do you transform this into the man pack I showed? Well, uh, about 18 months ago, a gentleman uh, in Tennessee uh, has this company Armor Lock, and he has built these aluminum frames. These, called, these are called Armor Lock TPA pack frames, and they solve a couple of functions. I'll put the playlist up here somewhere because I have a ton of videos on this topic. Uh, but basically, they are frames that allow you to affix the frame to either side of the radio, and you get a few things here. One, you get protection on the bottom side of the radio for all the cables and attachment points. You get protection of the head unit because you're typically recessed uh, below here, so for drop safety, but it also allows you to orient the radio facing upwards so that you can pull it out of your pack and use it. So step number two for me is once you select the radio, um, the pack frames are a really good way to put it in an orientation, give it protection, and give you the ability to mount accessories. The one thing I like about the Armor Lock uh, TPA pack frames is that they also have relocation mounts. So I can mount M-Lock slots here, uh, the ability to relocate an antenna. And the cool thing about that now is I have the ability, let's say I mount it here for the frames, relocate the coax, the top, I can now just drop on an antenna. So we have achieved our field expedient goal. So I'm not gonna dive into the Armor Lock TPA pack frames because I've done at least a dozen videos on these. Uh, so I'll link that in the description as well. Also bear in mind, I have a very good relationship with the Armor Lock owner. I don't get a kickback, but I absolutely love his product, the design, uh, build quality, and just supporting a serviceman who produces everything uh, in America. So that's it for the, the pack frame part of it and being able to run it rigid. Um, the battery is also a big concern here. I did a video on how to size batteries based on your needs. Take a look at that video. Uh, but in general these days, I am running the BioEno 6 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And since I mostly am receiving and not transmitting, I actually can get, depending on the radio and how I use it, up to about eight hours of runtime in the field. All right, so the other key component here is the antenna. I actually find the uh, whip antennas to actually be quite nice. Uh, this is the uh, signal stick by or signal stick by signal stuff, 
and uh, it's actually pretty uh, heavy duty. Mine has a little bit of a bend in it, uh, but it's mostly because I keep it stored in the bag in this configuration all the time. I have another antenna called the Comet BNC24 that I also like. The wonderful things about both these antennas is they can run higher power. This one can do up to 100 watts. You have to be careful with RFI exposure though. And the Comet BNC will do up to 20 watts. So really great stuff. So let's take a look again at one of the man packs here. So now that you kind of understand what we're looking at, uh, there is a top flap. I took it down here for uh, ease of use, but you can see there's the relocation cable. So the coax has been relocated from the back to the front side here. Uh, power has also been relocated to the side here. The battery, as well as the hand mic, are inside the pouch. So really, to deploy this radio, we take our signal stick, pop it on the BNC connector, and turn on the radio. We can now operate the radio. Uh, right now I have it set to 25 watts. Um, you'll also notice this particular unit has the DigiRig Mobile. Uh, I've done lots of videos on this. This gives me a ton of digital capabilities. I use this to send text messages to my wife over just using my radio. Check email, just using radio. Send my position, just using radio. And keyboard to keyboard communication between myself and my group, just using radio. Uh, I'll link to all that stuff. So I don't wanna to go too deep in this particular video. I just wanted to plant the seed of, well, let's not transmit. Um, plant the seed on what I believe to be a civilian style man pack, how you can go and build them, and hopefully you guys can make your own opinions. All right, so let's talk about a couple of different applications and uses for the man pack. I get a lot of emails about, I'm a new ham, I don't know which radio to buy. And the advice is you need one on your person, the HT, you need one in your vehicle, you need one in your shack. Well, I would argue that the man pack in its configuration and its ability to transition can work well on your person, in the vehicle, and in the shack. So it literally is the kind of thing, if you pick the race, the race, the right base radio for your man pack, you're probably gonna be able to serve all of your immediate needs. So for example, this man pack has a couple of D-rings on the back. So I do have a paracord grab handle and I can transition this very easily. I can also run a two point sling and wear it all over my shoulder. And so long as I'm not running full power, it's actually pretty safe for me to run on my backside. And then I can even transition it into the vehicle. In the RV, for example, I don't have a permanent radio install, but I did install just an antenna on the lip mount or on the hood with a lip mount. And I have a piece of coax that's just terminated into the cab. I drop this guy on the floor, open the flap and connect the BNC, turn it on. And in some cases I'll even strap a bungee cord uh, to the floor and this isn't moving anywhere. And then again, I can take it out. So wonderful for that type of transition. Uh, for public service events, this goes in my rucksack up a mountain. So if I'm in a spot where I don't have enough power on five watts on the HT, this serves that goal. Climbing up a summit, same thing. Uh, emergency preparedness, wonderful to have a little bit more power that you could just take with you. You don't have to remove your radio from uh, wherever it is or you know, if it's affixed to the shack, trying to figure out that nightmare. So those are just some very basic um, applications of serving you on your person, in the vehicle, or in your shack. Now, one other thing I failed to mention is uh, some people have been purchasing the Armorlock TPA pack frames because they look cool, and uh, they really are just putting it um, on their desktop, which is not a great experience. My 2980R light uh, is run that way. Uh, but typically I find that having the right bag is the best way to have to utilize this platform. I have been challenged by the right bag for a while uh, because I can never achieve a good fit. As an example, this bag doesn't quite clear the top. So I've had to modify a number of bags where I've cut this off, built a strap over the top, or have added additional fabric to it to make it work. Uh, this is the Helicon Tech e, &E pouch. It's the closest thing I've found, uh, but it's also gone up in price. And then on the front, I'm running a 511 6x6 admin pouch. 
As someone who likes this style of operation and has modified a handful of bags, I actually just found someone to take my current working prototype. Uh, it's this black bag. And he's building me basically one complete to my specs for my operating style. Uh, more on that on buy me a coffee, but suffice to say, it will be a very limited run uh, because I'm not in a position with enough time or capital to do any more than 40 bags publicly sold. And the guys on buy me a coffee, unfortunately, are going to be the first ones to have right of first refusal. But more on that later, uh, maybe it could be ready by the time we're done with the series. And you can see all the features like rain flies, uh, admin compartments, cable management pass throughs. Uh, but so that's to say a bag, in my opinion, is perfect. Heat has not been an issue for me, even though it's really hot. I quite literally had to take the GoPro off a few minutes ago and stick it in the freezer in the garage. And with this type of heat in here right now, we're like at 98 degrees in here maybe. The bag is actually fine so long as you're not running full duty cycle for long periods of time. My philosophy on man packs is that it's to hit a targeted combo window, field expedient. Take this out of your ruck, drop the antenna, establish your contact, and you're done. Even for my summits on the air, I typically don't operate more than 15 or 20 minutes. The longest I have run this in the pack was for a net that I ran where it was 50% duty cycle, where I was transmitting 50% of the time, listening to the participants, the other 50, and it actually was pretty good. Uh, there wasn't any overheating. My new bag design, not to toot my own horn because there's only going to be 40 of them, uh, actually is going to have ventilation management built into the design. It's a really cool feature. Anyways, guys, so this is just the first video in the next series or the next uh, few videos. I'm going to take each man pack out, show you all of its specs, all of its capabilities, and what are the actual real world applications. All right, let's go ahead and jump to the drawing. Love you guys for the 10K support. Uh, and we have two gifts. We have a DigiRig mobile as well. Thank you, Dennis. And uh, the iLuence HD1. Stay tuned. And in case I forget, I'm the tech prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. All right, morning guys, it's 0400 and we're gonna give away the Iluence HD1 first. First, I wanna thank you all for participating and for all of your wonderful comments. I went ahead and read every single one and for the first time was able to, actually, I've been able to reply to every single comment on the channel since the beginning. This one was tough because there were over 400 to respond to. I don't think I can do that moving forward, but I will read them all, so thanks a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and filter um, or pick, randomly pick a YouTube comment based on the hashtag 10,000. It looks like it's gonna want me to do some math. So let's go ahead and get our comments here and we'll see how many hashtag 10,000 comments, 389. And let's start for the Iluence HD1. Looks like uh, Tom Peroni. Congratulations on 10K. Keep up the good work. All right, Tom. Looks like yourself. Looks like you won yourself an Iluence HD1. All right. Let's go ahead and do this one more time, and I'm going to give away the DigiRig Mobile. Looks like they're going to need me to do more math. Two plus one is three. And for the DigiRig Mobile, uh, I only have uh, so many different cables, like for the Baofeng, some of the Asus. So uh, I may or may not be able to give you a cable, but I'll do my best. But at the very least, you'll get the DigiRig Mobile. Again, big thanks to uh, Dennis with DigiRig uh, for sending this our way for the giveaway. So let's see who we have here. And it looks like it's uh, Ben Galloway. Congratulations, uh, hashtag 10,000. Congratulations on reaching 10,000 subscribers. That's a great achievement. I mostly like your summits on the air activities. I do too. I really have been trying to get into DMR. This might be the way. Well, you got yourself, oh no, hmm. You got yourself the DigiRig. This is a cool little device. There's gonna be more on the channel. Uh, anyways, congratulations. Uh, the way you guys need to contact me is to essentially go to my channel page. So I think if you type in the tech prepper, actually, if you go to any video and click on my face there, if you go over to the about section, you can click on the view email address and it'll give you my email address. Uh, go ahead and send me an email. I will respond to you with the next steps and we'll get this uh, shipped as soon as I can. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for 10,000. Lots of man packs, lots of practical comms, more outdoor videos, uh, software, all that good stuff. Cheers, guys.